everyone welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel in this video I'm going to show you how I made this super cute bus tumbler and I am going to give this to my daughter's uh, bus driver because she's super sweet and I think she would love this um, you know and and these are you know I'm not reinventing the wheel and these are pretty popular but really I, I wanted to show you this process because it's kind of a back to basics with this this is a simple tumbler you know it's sand it's prep it's you know uh, spray paint and it's glitter um, just so that you guys get all of the steps again you know kind of a re reiterate um, and also for some people who are newer um, and they want to just deal with like one color glitter so this is the video for you so if you're interested to see how I did this go ahead and stick around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started <music> So before I take you outside to spray paint the cup, I'm going to show you the colors and the products that I use. So I spray painted the cup, which is a 20 ounce Skinny Straight by Maker Flow in this sun yellow. And I gave it about two light mists so that I could get full coverage. And then this is the spray adhesive that I'm using. It is Krylon spray adhesive. You can use whatever you have on hand. I know people like Loctite. I know that... Um, there are other brands. I think um, Elmer's makes a craft glue. So there's different, there's different, whatever you have on hand, 3M, whatever you like to use or whatever you can find, whatever um, is the cheapest for you. If it's sticky, it's going to work. All right. And then uh, once I uh, go in with my sticky, then I've got my glitter, which is by Glitter Makes It. This color is called Big Bird. And I have my link um, down below along with my discount code for this color and any other color you want to order. And then the seal I am going to use is Gloss Clear, the rust two times. You can use matte, you can use gloss, you can use satin, um, you can use triple thick. Whatever you want to use is completely up to you. This is what I'm going to use. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go outside and get this started. Start! All right. So I am going to show you how I can do two coats of glitter super, super fast using spray adhesive. And this is what I use and what I prefer when I'm doing fine glitter and just doing a simple one color coat. So I like and um, spray paint up my cup. This is Sun Yellow um, by Rust-Oleum. So I did one coat of that. And the reason why I spray it the color of the glitter is so that you get better coverage because sometimes the glitter will take on the color underneath. I don't know if this glitter would, but I'm not taking any chances. So that's why I spray paint. All right, so I'm just gonna spray paint and get good coverage over the entire cup. Get your bottom. And normally I would run back inside, but just to show you ease, we are doing this on the front porch because it's raining. And I'm just gonna go right into glittering my cup. Rain, rain, go away. Just gonna make sure I've got good full coverage. Get your bottom. All right, I'm not gonna let this dry. I go right into second coat. So I'm gonna spray again right over it. Make sure I get the best coverage I can get. Your bottom and your rim. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do my second coat. Two coats of glitters in just a few minutes. I've never had any issues with doing it this way. I don't know if anybody else has, but 
when I'm doing this one glitter coat of fine glitter, this is how I prefer to do it. And I don't see any reason to wait in between coats. Now after this, I'm gonna go right into sealing my glitter with my gloss clear. And then I'm gonna let it dry completely for a couple hours. All right. So, there you have it. Complete glitter coverage, two coats, bottom included, just a couple of minutes. Here's my two times gloss clear. I'm gonna give this a light coat to start sealing this. And then I'm gonna let this dry for two hours. I'm gonna give it one more coat and then it's gonna be ready for epoxy. Okay, next step. Now my cup has two coats of the Rust-Oleum two times. I let it dry for about 10 minutes after the first coat. Then I went and sprayed it uh, with another coat and let it dry for two hours before moving on to this step with the epoxy. I have my uh, regular epoxy that I use, which is the Super Clear. I am not using a fast set because this will be turning overnight. Otherwise, I would use the fast set. So you can do whatever you want to do. I have mixed up, now I have more in this cup because I'm gonna be doing other tumblers, but I'm using about between 30 and 40 mLs of epoxy. And the reason why I'm using so much is because once you start applying the glitter on to, or sorry, once you start applying the epoxy to the glitter, you're gonna see that the glitter kind of sucks up the epoxy. So you wanna make sure you get good coverage. So you wind up using more this first go around. And I'm going to do two coats of epoxy before I move on to sanding, cleaning the cup up, and then moving on to my decal. Don't forget to torch, and I will see you soon. First coat of epoxy was drying for eight hours. This is the second coat. All right, guys, moving on to the next step. Let's hope I have everything. I was like, okay, do I have everything I need so I don't have to get up? All right, so I've got two coats of epoxy on this cup and um, it is ready to be cleaned up and sanded and ready for my decal. Um, this is a fine glitter, so the two coats went over pretty nicely. I do have some rough spots, so I'm gonna give, this cup's been drying for about 20 hours or so, so I do wanna give it, you know, I wanna rough it up to give the next coat of epoxy something to grab onto, but, so as you can see, the inside of this cup is pretty, you know, it's pretty, yellow from the spray paint and I'm not even sure if there's epoxy because I can't see it so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off that spray paint on the inside of the cup and I don't usually do this because I do have a video but I decided to make this like a super step-by-step -step, uh, all together consecutive because it seems like I have questions about the steps and the processes so I decided to make this, you know, into kind of like, you know, going back to basics. All right, so I like to use a cotton ball. We're also using acetone, pure acetone. You can get this at Walmart or any, um, any of your home improvement stores. Walmart has it, Walmart has this particular brand. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up the rim with this acetone. Uh, the reason why I'm using a cotton ball is because I feel like for some reason, the texture of the cotton ball gets, it gets in there, if that makes any sense. So I go in first with the cotton ball to get the heavy stuff off. And then once I've got the heavy stuff off, I go in with my paper towel and I wet my paper towel. And I am using a very thick um, glove. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree so that I don't mess up my manicure. If I didn't have painted nails right now, then I would just be using my bare hand. But my daughter, my mother, and I went and had Manny Petties for Mother's Day, so I'm gonna try to protect. All right, so now the inside of the cup is better. There is no yellow anymore. I've gotten that out. But if you can see, there's some epoxy overage right here and another like so little spot so I'm going to take my craft knife 
and I like to use a sh like a new one so I like it to be like a fresh blade when I'm doing this because I'm going to be scraping very gently around this rim to get this epoxy off and it should come right off especially after you've used the acetone it should come right off with no problem and I'm going to stand up so that you can see and I can see what I'm doing and then I'm going to go ahead and scrape this edge here so I'm going to get this and just go around lightly, see if anything catches. And if it catches, we're going to get that off. And I'm going to feel around. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm blonde as a bat for seeing up close. So I'm just going to look around. So now what I'm going to go in and do is I'm putting my dusk mask on. And this is one of the masks I made for Christmas. I'm going to put a dust mask on because I don't want to inhale any of this epoxy dust because I'm going to go in with my sanding block. Normally I do this over my trash can, but I'm not going to point you over my trash can. I've done that before. But I'm just going to do it like this. So I'm going to start by going like this. Then I'm gonna go around my edges and I'm gonna go on an angle. Now, a lot of people like to take off enough so you can see like the silver part. I don't do that. Um, most of the time I don't do that. So when I do my epoxy, my epoxy will come up and over just a hair onto the slip. Just a hair. So I'm kind of careful when I do my final coats. So, but this edge here is definitely going to be thinner than the rest of it because I am going to, I am tapering it. So you want to make sure it's smooth in case somebody decides they're going to drink straight out of the cup without a lid. You don't want to have sharp, jagged edges. Now you run less of, um, less risk, you know, less likely that they're going to have that with a fine glitter, but you don't want to take that chance. You want it to be as smooth as possible. And this is a 120 grit, I think. I think a 120 grit. So you just keep feeling and you know where it feels rough, you just go in on an angle and just make sure you smooth that out. So typically your roughest spots are gonna be up at your top and your bottom and you're gonna feel the bottom. So I feel the bottom and I feel some kind of pokies. And I'm gonna go in and do this and go around, much like I did at the top, on an angle and just go around. And I'm gonna feel it. And wherever it feels still bumpy, I'm gonna go in. And I'm lightly sanding. I'm not, I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want to use a thick grit because you are going to put another coat of epoxy. So you feel it feels pretty good. And I'm going to just give it a little scuff up on the bottom because again, I'm going to do a very, very thin coat on the bottom as my last coat. But I want to, I want something to stick to this. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this a sand all the way around and basically rough it up and scuff it up and it's going to look awful. It's going to be hazy and that's okay because as soon as you put that first coat of epoxy back on or a coat of epoxy back on, it's going to shine it right up because I hear that a lot too. I go, oh my God, I sanded my cup and now look at it. Can I fix it? Yes, absolutely. Epoxy is a wonderful thing. So, just scuffing this up, making sure I get the entire cup. Because it's been drying so long and because it's pretty cured. I'm gonna give it a feel, feel for, you know, if there's any bubbles. So I have a spot here and I don't know if you can see it where it like bubbled. Let's see if I can get it in. You see that? So this is, 
So sometimes you get like a stubborn bubble like that, even after torching. So you can take a thicker grit and just work on that little spot. And if it's ridiculous, and it's gonna take you forever to do that, I have this tool, which I'll link below that I bought from Amazon, this little U-tool, handy dandy. I love this thing. And this is also good if you're, if you get really sloppy with your epoxy and you get it up around the rim and you're having a hard time getting it off, a couple of things you can do. You can heat up your craft knife, which will loosen epoxy, or you can use one of these. So sometimes when I have a bubble and it's sticking up really high, I will use one of these to smooth it down, but very gently, just super, super gently because you don't want to take too much off. If you take too much off, then you're going to get down to your glitter and you don't want to do that. And then I'm going to take my sanding block and just smooth it out. All right, bubble be gone. All right, so just make sure you give it a quick feel. Make sure there's no more bubbles. Everything seems smooth. Give it a once over again. Make sure you haven't missed anything. All right, now next step, you're gonna wash your cup. You're either gonna douse it down with 91% alcohol and wipe it down, or you're gonna wash it with Dawn dish soap. And the reason why you would use Dawn dish soap is because it's a degreaser and you don't want um, when you're applying your decals, you don't want any grease on your cup. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up because this has got dust and stuff on it now. And I'm going to spray this down. Wipe it down with my paper towel. And another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to spray my hands with alcohol and wipe it too to help with the grease. Cause you are gonna to be touching this cup because you're gonna be applying the decals. So you wanna to touch it as little as possible, but sometimes it's impossible to not go. All right. So it's all hazy. That's okay. It's gonna shine right back up. And if it bothers you that much when you're applying your decals, you can always put clear coat over it and that'll shine it back up too. Um, and because I'm using vinyl and I'm not using let me take my dust mask off. And I'm not using water slide. It's okay. it's okay for it to be hazy. All right. So now I'm going to start applying my decals. So I picked out this. My name is Hey Bus Driver. And I bought this, I think, off of Etsy or Design Bundles. I'll, I don't know. I'll find it and link it below. Those are the only two places that I really buy stuff is um, Design Bundles and Etsy. But I thought this was really cute because I actually don't know my daughter's bus driver's name. And she's like super sweet. So that's why I want to make this cup for her. All right, guys. So I'm going to speed this up because it took a little while to get all these decals on. So uh, with this particular vinyl decal, it came in a bunch of little pieces and I had to layer them. And I did that off camera before I started. But um, it, it takes a little while, like the one, the one that I'm just doing now where it's, you know, uh, my name is Hey Bus Driver, that was easy. But then the rest, I kind of eyeballed. So I was watching, like looking at my computer and then placing it on my cup based on where it was, you know, on it looking at the design in retrospect i probably could have did it a little bit easier by grouping and attaching the black ones and then the other colored ones but i didn't think of that because i've never really layered like this before so um so it took me a little bit longer so i apologize for that but you know most of you know how to cut your vinyl on cricut most of you know how to apply so I'm just going to go through quicker. That's the windshield. And so the colors I used for the windshield is actually, I used a holographic, the like blue pearl, I think it was, is what I chose for the windshield on that. That's two layers. It's the black vinyl outline over the holographic. And I am angling you down to try to get you to see. 
And so I'm just going to keep going through the layers. I'm eyeballing everything. I didn't measure anything up. I eyeball most everything. Oh, that's the grill. And so I used a silver foil for the grill marks. And then it's the black outline. But I'm just going to put a little bit of music on uh, to get you through this. You can speed through this. Or if you want to watch the process uh, for this, then you can go ahead, obviously, and do that. But I'll put on some lovely iMovie music and hope that YouTube doesn't flag it as original music and then make me change it because I've had that happen before. Seriously, like they've, they've like, oh, you, you're doing copyright music and it's actually iMovie music. I disputed it, but like I wound up just replacing it with some of their music. I think in one of my videos, I actually just was like quiet. So that like there was like nothing. So now it's like a silent video. So I'm going to try to pick one that they're not going to flag on me and uh, get you through the rest of this until we get to the next step. black and the white. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> Look guys, I I got 16 stickers, ladybugs. Um 16 ladybug stickers. I'm going to hold it up for a bit so that you can Look at it and see it and see how many they are. Very cute. And I got them I'm just telling you they're 16. I got and I've got them from beating my dad. And I wait, was, wait, wait, beating your dad? <laughs> beating beating him at what? At a game? Yeah, like Okay, you I wanna was, talk about <laughs> you I wanna you wanna say you wanna say that you were beating your dad at something, not just beating him, because that sounds like you're beating your dad. I was beating my dad Dad I at beating at my dad at like skating. Skating, okay. Not skating. At well, at scootering, and and I did scootering at ten, nine, seven, ten, 
second all right guys so yep very cute i like those they would look cute on a pen okay so here we can go can i have them on a, on a pen what's that can i have them on a pen or a cup yeah all right so this is it this is the vinyl design um it was I'm a little do another one and they might be false okay this was a little a little labor intensive because there was a lot of pieces that needed to be layered and placed on the cup. I think there's probably an easier way to do it. Like I said, attach, um, you know, the colors and it would probably go on a lot smoother. But so here's the front, here's the back. I love it. I'm gonna put it on the turner and I'm gonna finish it up with two more coats of epoxy and this cup is gonna be done. All right, so I'll be back in a bit. All right, this cup is ready for its first coat of epoxy after I've applied the vinyl. So the first thing I'm going to do is wipe it down with 91% alcohol using a coffee filter. The reason I am using a coffee filter is because it is less fibrous or no fibers as opposed to a paper towel which has plenty of fibers and you don't want any of that on your cup. The reason why I'm wiping the cup down before I put my epoxy is I want to wipe off any grease from my hands if they if I've gotten greasy fingerprints because you don't want the epoxy to repel over it. You're trying to get as smooth of a final coat as possible. I did not seal my vinyl with anything. I did not use um, any spray. I did not use any quick coat. I did not use any poly acrylic. I'm going just right in with my epoxy and um, I'm going to torch it and then I will assess it in the morning to see if it needs another coat. I am using a kitchen torch to torch out any bubbles and I'm using a torch over a heat gun because I wanna pop bubbles, not move the epoxy around. All right, guys, done with this tumbler, and this is so cute. I love how it came out. This, you know, hey, my name is Hey Bus Driver, just cracks me up. I think it's so cute. I actually don't know my daughter's bus driver's name, so this wound up being perfect. But, um, you know, this was, again, a very simple tumbler to do. You know, the, the vinyl was a little bit more advanced, but I'm sure you could figure that out and you can do something even simpler if you want. You know, it's up to you, but it's really just goes back to, you know, prepping your cup and um, spray painting your cup and glittering your cup with one, you know, with one color and, you know, the epoxy. So it's really just kind of, you know, back to a basic. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Um, please give me a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to look in the description below where I link um, the products they use or where you can find them. And this is it for this tutorial. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.